He's competed everywhere you wouldn't believe Done all the stunts on Killing Eve He's quite partial to a rear naked choke A family man and an all-round good bloke They call him Papa, Papa J Papa, Papa J They call him Papa, Papa J Papa, Papa J Hi there, my name is James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast Dad Mind Matters Helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. In this week's podcast episode, I talked to my friend Jay about what it's like being a professional stunt performer, a globe-trotting Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitor, and a father of three. I set up this podcast because I'm on a mission to try and create an online community that really supports parents, specifically dads, and specifically dads like myself, who often struggle with their mental health. If that sounds like something you'd like to support, please follow this podcast, or if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe. So Jay, how long have you been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Uh, must be coming up. This will be my eighth year, I think. Okay. Why I start, started at 49, now 57, so. What made you yeah. want to start? Um, that's a good question. I think a combination of just, I was always interested in watching like MMA. Okay. And I guess some of my heroes in that were people that were doing really good jiu-jitsu and I kind of knew what it was okay. but um, hadn't really tried it tried a bit of wrestling and different things but hadn't really tried it and then um, I was working in Belfast and uh, Conor McGregor's gym SBG wow, was really close to where we were working what were you doing there what, what? Game of Thrones stunt performer stunt coordinator yeah and I was performing on Game of Thrones and uh, Belfast was like a second home and just you know I wanted to have a routine of exercise while I was there uh, and I found I found SPG straight blast gym uh, which is even though I think Conor McGregor started in Dublin but nevertheless there's a Belfast one as well okay and I went along met is the guys it's jiu-jitsu, boxing, MMA, and, right. and Muay Thai. Okay. You know, uh, separate classes of each. They've got a cage there. They've got lots of a big matted area. You know, they've got a bit of everything, really. Okay. Yeah. But the jiu-jitsu there was really sound. You know, really good. You know, good group of people. Um, have you, have you found it's helped your, your professional work, like your stunt performing work? I, I think it, it's given me um, a different insight into martial arts in general which does does help at work and then occasionally when I'm coordinating if I have to put a fight together I'm thinking more about jiu-jitsu and trying to implement jiu-jitsu into the yeah, routines yeah. Where, where I can if it's appropriate for the for the job you know yeah who's the coolest person or the most interesting not Steve although he is interesting uh, I'll see you both yeah cheers yeah. dude cheers, easy. I mean this is live television but don't worry Steve it's fine <laughs> Always the professional. <laughs> who's the fav? Who's the most? Who's your favourite actor that you ever worked with? Um, I, I suppose, like you're never going to get a simple answer out of me. <laughs> I don't want I, one. But do you know what it is? I, I guess it depends with how you define favourite. Favourite because I've enjoyed watching their movies on screen, or favourite because I worked with them and they were just a really nice person and you know, real, real sort of. Uh, um, like a nice surprise because they were easy to get on with and very personable and that kind of thing. You know, it just depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I suppose it's difficult because it might not be someone that springs to mind, but... Um. I, I think it's also, it's also kind of, um, you know, they're not always the biggest stars. No. So some of the actors that I've worked with are amazing people and they're not, as I say, they're not always the biggest stars. I mean, I... I I really enjoyed, I, I got to coordinate a season of Killing Eve, oh, wow. um, and I really enjoyed doing, uh, actually we did have a jiu-jitsu fight in that. I've seen, uh, yeah, on the park bench? Yeah, and that was directly after coming here. Really? You know, so that was like, that was, I was quite inspired by things I was and learning, the learning on the like mats. That you worked with on Killing Eve? Yeah, really cool, I mean, you know, both, there was a natural chemistry between the two lead actors anyway. Um, Jody and Sandra and and they 
you know that 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 sort of came across in everything that we did yeah yeah it's why it's such a successful yeah yeah absolutely show. and i think having a good script and then the gelling of the cast just you know if it all falls into place it can create yeah, some yeah. magic you know yeah, yeah, yeah. which i think that had I, I i suppose as a personal kind of um one of my personal favourites was I was working with Sylvester Stallone last year, wow. which was amazing because uh, Expendables 4, where I got called in. I wasn't coordinating it. I got called in from a friend of mine, Pete, who was the stunt coordinator, and um, I got to double Stallone on that film. Wow. So what was that like? That was one of my sort of highlights, I no, guess. I Just because, you know, as a kid, probably like you, you know, he's one of the iconic action heroes. I was heroes. obsessed with Rocky. Yeah. I remember and, building and, a garage in a, in a bit of gym in our garage trying to replicate, trying sort to of replicate the, yeah. the Russian um, um, sort of farmyard <laughs> yeah, I know, training yeah. session. Through running through the snow. Absolutely. From, uh, yeah, no, what uh, absolutely. It? Does he have much of a martial arts background? Um, you know, I, th I think it's more about his physicality. So I think his background in training has been more about taking elements of martial arts, but also obviously his, you know, I mean, he's now mid seventies and his body still looks amazing yeah. and he's very, he he's strong, he's, 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 yeah. yeah. So I think he's, he's focused on learning um, styles that he needs for his movies, like obviously boxing being the most obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's no um, way you can do the, there's no way you can do the Rocky franchise without picking, becoming quite a useful No, I, I, absolutely, yeah. But I think, you know, I think his part of his passion has always been to, to stay strong, to stay fit. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously most of his roles, you can see that, can't you? Yeah. My um, the podcast and the YouTube channel, Dad by Matters, is, uh, well, I set it up largely because Jiu-Jitsu has really helped me with my mental health. Mm -hmm. It's made me a better dad, a better husband, but also on a personal, I just feel, I mean, I struggle with depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and jiu-jitsu just is a game changer yeah. in what it does. How has jiu-jitsu helped your physical and mental health? I think, I mean, you, you kind of summed it up well there, but I just think life obviously has its ups and downs for everybody um i think some of those ups and downs affect people deeper than others or perhaps they just show it less yeah, than yeah, others yeah. you know sometimes you just you don't know with people right yeah um sometimes it's very difficult to tell what people are going through but i think i i see jujitsu in a weird way as a kind of meditation yeah even though it can be one of the most uncomfortable <laughs> things that yeah that you can imagine then, yeah right. i've heard i've heard that said a lot yeah people have said similar things yeah and uh, you know I, I just think for me it's it's definitely helped keep me level through some tough times um covid obviously sent everybody upside down yeah and and you know i think i think in that experience i think people took positives and negatives out of it but again i think when something unexpected happens in life um, jiu jitsu has a way of just keeping keeping you kind of on an yeah. even keel yeah. yeah 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 and and for me i yeah i feel it's important in that way and i've done other martial arts before um and i haven't had the same experience yeah, that i've had with jiu jitsu i've done a lot of i mean i've done a lot of long distance running marathons mm -hmm. and open water swimming but the best feeling i ever get and the calmest is is after you probably a Thursday training session where I've done a couple of classes, I've probably been absolutely smashed by the same black belts. But I cycle home with just, I'm so chilled out and happy. And I just, it's its so rare. I've never had anything else in my life that has that effect on my physical and mental health. Yeah, and I, I don't know how you felt after the competition you did recently, but you know, I find that competition sort of pushes me to the edge in a way it's really scary yeah it is irrespective of whether you are eight doing it for the first time or i mean it's only my second competition and um there was no one in my bracket so they put me into a heavier bracket that guy didn't turn up and i just thought well i've trained for six months i want to do it so i ended up in nogi which mm -hmm. i don't really train against guys 10 years younger and i was utterly humbled i had two fights I just survived the first one with lots of points. The second one, I, I got double leg takedown and got smashed. And 
it, yeah, it was uncomfortable, but actually, I, it was such a, a real experience. It was so like, it was so interesting that I just, I'm gonna try and do it one a year, because it's so out of my comfort zone. It's so, that I think it's really good, because you learn yeah. so much about yourself when you are scared, I suppose, or anxious, or, yeah. and I was so proud of, of everyone that did it. It's yeah. such a, I think things like that really bond you you know, these people become your family, and actually, there are a lot of people here I don't know their second names, but I feel so connected to them. Mm. And that's such a wonderful thing to have, and as it becomes more and more important the older you get. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're kind of stepping into the unknown, aren't you? And you've you, done a lot of competitions, haven't you? Quite a few, yeah. How many, do you, how many have you done? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure, maybe maybe 25 or something wow. like that i'm not sure but something you, like that but they've taken you to brazil america yeah yeah where else have you been on competitions um france spain um it's awesome man yeah america a few times brazil um do you have a favorite comp that you've done probably well i think i think there was two i think brazil because um, I was really happy to win a fight, you know, yeah, that's awesome, um, and also I think just Brazil had its, well, okay, let me rephrase that. I was really happy to win a fight in Brazil because yeah. I think I'd built it up in my mind to be a monster. Okay. You know what I mean? Just yeah, the, yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Like I really wanted to go, but it was also the biggest step into the unknown because the language the yeah. going to a country that everyone said the birthplace you know, of the martial arts yeah right. the birthplace of martial arts so i assumed everybody was just going to tear your head off <laughs> and and also going to a place that everybody even my brazilian friends were telling me like oh you know don't just wear be, your watch yeah you know keep your eyes open you know be careful if you use your phone yeah, a heightened sense of consciousness yeah just like all, all this stuff and you know like funny thing so my first experience of brazilian competition i went to sign in and um, they took a big bag of rice out from under the desk and waved it in my face and said something in Portuguese. And I was like, you know, and um, anyway, cut a long story short, I had to go back outside, go to another stand that was about 500 meters away, buy a bag of rice, come back in. And the custom is that before you register, you give this donation to charity. That's awesome. Yeah before they let you register and pick up your competition t-shirt and all that. Um, well, you see, that, that, that should happen everywhere. Yeah, but just interesting, right? It's, yeah. You know, and trying to trying to explain what that's all about when I don't speak their language and they didn't speak mine. You know, it's kind of funny. But but uh, going into the arena, it, it was like it reminded me kind of of Gladiator. Because it's they're so passionate about their camaraderie and team spirit and jiu-jitsu that you can literally you, you can hear from outside yeah, like you know what i mean like like the slaying of the gladiators yeah 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 so i kind of thought oh god um but that that so that that was amazing just being at the home of jiu-jitsu and then um the, the other one i'd say which really stuck in my mind was uh, uh the pan-american was really cool just because every kind of jiu-jitsu rock star was there you know, from Galvao to, you know, to uh, Cyborg, to John Danaher, awesome. Merigale, you know. Did you meet any of them? Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're walking around Normal and, guys. you know, they're happy to chat. So long as you, obviously, so long as you pick your moment when they're not about to step on the mat or something, <laughs> yeah. you know. But um, no, they're all cool. They're really down to earth people and just, but, but they're the people that you kind of look at on social you're media right, you're right and, yeah, the you're off now. yeah and you go wow you know like yeah. just you know um so that that was cool and it was also the pan americans was probably one of the sort of friendliest most i don't mean friendly on the mat obviously but friendly in terms of once you're off the mat lots of people just want to chat and cool, they're man. interested in that you know coming from england which is as much and, which is is i think as important yeah yeah i get i get yeah. a lot from just being around this just in this ecosystem and we're very lucky at this gym because it's just full of 
there's not there's no one here I wouldn't happily have a conversation with. There's, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's just it's, it's a really positive, lovely gym. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. And I, the one thing I love about, and I think actually a really good test of that is that you know it's got a really extensive and uh, kids classes. I mean, you know, I, my two sons do jujitsu. Your son does jujitsu. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really positive thing. Yeah. Very. And how's how's uh, your uh, your lad getting on with it? No, really good, Logan. Yeah, he's he he's you know like any kid, sometimes he's tired, sometimes he wants to go for a swim instead, that kind of thing. But you know, once we kind of get him to switch on, we the way we talk to him, we we sort of say to him, you know, switch on your key in your head. Yeah, it's almost like get into the zone. Yeah, yeah. It's only forty five minutes. Switch your brain on go in, do your job, and then when you come out, we can chill out, go play, do whatever, you know what I mean? I think it's such a lovely thing. I feel so lucky to have this this connection of this sport with my boys. And I'm sure a lot of it, sometimes they're doing it because they like to, to spend time with daddy. You know, I, I, I played a lot of rugby growing up and I used to go and watch rugby with my dad. I'm sure that's a lot of the reason I love the sport. Yeah. I, imagine, I imagine the sport itself was probably fairly secondary. The fact that I was hanging out with my dad, mm. and I just think, yeah, I don't think you can underestimate how important that is for you and for your child. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, my dad used to wrestle, um, and he was an amateur wrestler, but he competed for Ireland, where he was from. Oh wow! Man. And I remember when I was a kid, he he was always grabbing me and like yeah. you know going on going on like all fours in that typical kind of wrestler's sort yeah, of stance, yeah, yeah. you know, and getting me to like try and pull his arm out or you know climb on his back and you know turn him over and all that kind of stuff when I was just a kid. But uh, yeah, I mean, amazing, like probably one of the most natural bonding things you could do with a child, right? Yeah, and I think it's just really important, in, irrespective of age or gender or ability, to know what your body can do. There's nothing, um, my job as a seafront officer, when we've had to respond to incidents where we've literally, it has been life and death, and I've pulled someone out so he's not breathing, Jiu Jitsu helps you approach things methodically. Right, and that is a huge game too. When I think about how I used to approach incidents, and you know, or, or you know, heroin overdose, uh, some guys locked himself in the toilet, or antisocial behaviour. The main reason I started jujitsu was I was involved in an incident while I was trying to help a, a police officer who got assaulted, and then this guy had a go at me, and I thought I've got no skills, I have nothing, and that was kind of I thought, well, I need I need some skills, and I think it's really important to just to understand. Because I think just being in this environment, you just don't panic. And I think that if in the worst case scenario, you know, you're in a situation where you can't run, there's no exit strategy, you just have to do something. I think that's half the battle. Just yeah. not freaking out. Yeah. And you know, a thought that I had just, just occurred to me, it's like when we were talking about the different things that you go through to compete, to some yeah. extent, even when you roll with people here, but, or if you go to another club, I don't know if you've ever done that, just for a, a class or yeah. for a seminar or, you know, it's going to roll with people that you don't know. Yeah, and it's the unknown. And it's the unknown. And that's what's scary. Yeah, but I think, like, to me, whatever the result, get your hand raised at the end, tap out, whatever happens, I feel for myself personally, I've never competed and wished I hadn't. Yeah, and I always nice. come out of it feeling that I'm stronger than I was before I went in. So it's almost like putting, you know, another penny in the money box. Yeah, I like that, man. Do you, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't know if that's the same for everybody. I'm sure everybody has a very personal experience with it. I imagine that resonates with a lot of people. It's combating that stepping on the mat. Yeah. You know? And it's, it, it, jiu Jitsu itself is not something that anyone can do. And I think competing in Jiu Jitsu is even a degree beyond that where it's like, oh, this is really not not something I'm comfortable with. Yeah. But then as you said, what you learn when you put yourself in that position is massive. Yeah. And it, and it affects every element of your life. Yeah. And I think where I where I notice it pays dividends from having competed quite a lot, I'm I'm a little bit more familiar with that environment, certainly, yeah. than I was when I first started competing. And I think that in a way is the payback. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure it make it affects because yeah, just be, everything you do professionally yeah. and at home life. Yeah, you know you 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 know yourself, uh, probably even from your job. But you know you go and do tough things, and it makes you stronger. Yeah, 
either yeah, it breaks true. you or it makes you stronger. <laughs> yeah. And we wouldn't still be doing this no. at Purple Belt if it was going to break us. That's true. So, you know, in some ways internally, I think you do, you, you know, you do get stronger. And I know it's not just about being tough because obviously Jiu Jitsu is about a skill. No, but I think but, that helps your self esteem, which I think yeah. helps. Yeah, your mental health. So why, if you were, if you were, firstly, what is one piece of advice if you were to, you would like, if you could go back in time and give your white belt version of yourself from from someone who's the next step for you is brown belt. What what one piece of advice do you wish you had known? Well, <laughs> within the first two weeks of learning jujitsu, I wanted to learn berimbolos right flying arm bars <laughs> of course you did. yeah and suplexes right yeah and um i suppose the one piece of advice i would give myself is continually focus on the fundamentals because like even now i have you know plenty of light bulb moments where i realize that quality jujitsu isn't necessarily about the kind of the movie finishes no, no, do, you, no. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and and obviously the person that everyone references to is roger gracie yeah because he's made a career of being amazing some would say the best in the world and he doesn't do flashy you know coolest yeah. moves does he but he does what he does like really well yeah 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 and, and this is why he's the best in the yeah world. and and you know maybe also james it's like you and i are perhaps some of the let, let's say the older the generation of the well we're you know yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We're, we're kind of um yeah i don't know how, how old are you i'll be 47 in a month okay so you're a little bit younger than me but we're still you know we're yeah. on that side of things and it's like um i want a long game i want to be doing this from 80 yeah and, and if and i'm flying around trying to compete with 20 year olds hurt myself well i'm not that's not going to happen exactly so we need to have like an intelligent game and i think a lot of that is is being really strong in your fundamentals yeah don't you i think you're right mate. you know because if somebody else is like a 30 years younger and they're a supreme athlete it's gonna be tough nigh on impossible for us to match them at their game yeah but just you know, things like i think cardio flexibility yeah just strength sure yeah but somebody like maurizio roger's dad yeah like doesn't need to move no, much no, no, no. and he's a monster yeah, on yeah, the mats yeah. and that's, you know that's that's what that, that's, just, that's who i'd like to yeah in, and like. i i love the fact about jiu-jitsu that here we are you know um in in as i say uh are we middle-aged or are we just over middle age whatever we probably are, mate. <laughs> um We're probably, yeah and and you know the thing is i still feel like when i'm 10 years older than i am now i can be much better at jiu-jitsu than yeah, i am and now just think about do you know what i mean the, yeah the version of you that was that hasn't hadn't done jiu-jitsu you wouldn't be in this position no you just wouldn't no no this is really great just so just to finish yeah why do you if you could give if you could give a dad of a middle-aged dad one reason to start jiu-jitsu why would it be what would it what would it be what's the reason a middle-aged man or a middle-aged dad I mean, why should a why why should a forty or fifty year old dad, who probably looks and think, well, that's a lovely idea for you guys, but I'm, I would never dream even starting that, even I can, even though I can totally see the benefits. Why? What would you say to that to that man? Do you know what kind of comes to mind? Like the first part of that question that comes to mind is simply that most forty or fifty year old dads have got at least teenage or even older children. Yeah probably um how old is your youngest uh well our youngest is five our oldest is ten so right okay so you're in the younger we're still the other same school. as same as me yeah, yeah. yeah so you know we're in a but, sense we'll blink and that they'll be teenagers right but to some extent you and i are in slightly more unusual positions because we're both on the older side with quite young kids yeah yeah i've got friends that had kids at 25 yeah, yeah. You know. my brother and sister were yeah so th you know early, they're yeah. they're going out you know to see their kids at work and stuff like that or they've been to their weddings or you know so i think um i think just just keeping you grounded giving you an adventure 
a, that's nice. A, a, yeah. a reason to train and a reason to be mindful of your health and your fitness. Um, I, I, yeah, I agree with you, man. You know? I really do. And I think, I, yeah, I think all, all that stuff is absolutely on the money. But, but you can't, you know, the thing is, and, and this is maybe why so few people go all the way through to black, it doesn't matter how much you want to do it yourself, you can't overly sell it to someone. And for no. some people, it won't be for them, right? No. Yeah, there's a reason that only 10 percent i think I don't, I don't know how accurate these stats are but only 10 percent of people who start jiu-jitsu get to blue belt and apparently only one percent get to black belt right which that's insane yeah. so one person in 100 will become a black belt and i also heard i don't know how accurate it is but i heard out of every um out of everybody that does jiu-jitsu only three percent compete or have ever oh, that's competed interesting. yeah that's I, I you know i don't know who does these stats but you know, there's all. It's interesting, yeah, I, though, isn't it? Jiu-jitsu competing for me uh, once a year helps me stop being lazy and stop going. Oh well, you know, I'm 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 going to be a, a jiu-jitsu dad coach. Like, well, yes, but put yourself in the fire. It's actually, put yourself in that position because I think yeah, you'll learn so much and, yeah. and, and and you'll look back and even you look back in twenty years time and go, well, I did twenty tournaments, I got smashed, I won some medals, and but I made some cool friends. It just makes your story more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know, like as you said yourself, even if you know you get smashed, <laughs> somehow you walk taller. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, not physically because you're vertebrae. No, that's <laughs> right. No, you're probably about four inches shorter. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? If you practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and might be interested in being a guest on a future podcast episode, please let me know in the comments. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.